Hello everyone, I am Sally James from Government College University, Lahore. In this video, I will explain the implementation of pure mathematics in other fields, specifically in the field of biology. Mathematics is a fundamental part of our daily life, deeply connected to various fields such as technology, the economy, social sciences, and natural sciences. The topic that I will present in this video is application of factors in biology modeling natural structures. Factors are included in the branch of mathematics known as geometry. Let's start with diving into the fascinating world of factors in biology where we use mathematical equations to model the complex pattern we observe in nature. Imagine we are in a forest where the beauty of nature's pattern unfold in front of our eyes. As we look forward, you notice the repeating pattern of trees branches and the complex designs of leaves and even the veins in each leaf. These patterns are not random but follow a unique and beautiful order that can be described using fractals. Now the question is, what are fractals? Fractals are complex structures that exhibit cell similarity across different scales. This means that no matter how much you zoom in or out, the pattern looks similar. Unlike traditional sh geometric shapes, fractals can have non-integer dimensions known as fractal dimensions which quantifies their complexity. The example of fractal is Cantor set. It was introduced by the German mathematician George Cantor in 1883. Now I will tell you the construction of Cantor set. Begin with the line segment, divide the segment into three equal parts and remove the middle third. Repeat this process for the remaining segment. In each iteration, the middle third of every remaining segment is removed. After infinitely many iterations, the remaining set of points is the Cantor set. And you can see the set, Cantor set is a cell similar. Each smaller segment that remains after each iteration is reduced scale copy of the entire set. Now I'm going to explain to you the fractal dimension. What is fractal dimension? To quantify the complexity of fractals, we use the concept of fractal dimension. Unlike traditional shapes, fractal dimension have known integer dimension that capture their complexity. And the formula to calculate the fractal dimension is log number of cell similar pieces over log magnification factor. Now I'm going to tell you how we can find the fractal dimension of Sierpinski triangle, which is noted by S. Note that S may be decomposed into three quadrant figures, each of which is exactly half the size of S. This is to say that if we magnify any of three pieces of S by a factor two, we obtain an exact replica of S that is as consists of three cell similar copies of itself each with magnification factor 2. Now we can look deeper into S and C for the copies of S. For the Sertensky triangle also consists of nine cell similar copies of itself each with magnification factor 4 or we can chop S into 27 cell similar pieces each with magnification factor 8. In general we may divide S into three par n cell similar pieces each of which is a quadrant, and each of which may be magnified by a factor of 2 per n to yield the entire figure. This type of self similarity at all scale is the hallmark of the images known as fractals. To explain the concept of fractal dimension, firstly, we have to understand what we mean by dimension in the first place. Obviously, a line has dimension 1, a plane dimension 2, and a cube dimension 3. But why is this? It is interesting to see why these facts are true and what is the dimension of Sapinski triangle. We can say line has one dimension because there is only one way to move on a line and plane has two dimensions because there are two directions in which to move. But we can move in two directions in a line also, backward and forward and infinitely many in the plane. So what we can say, we are saying that two linearly independent directions in a plane but this is a complicated and difficult to articulate. So what we can say that plane has two dimensional because it has two dimensions, meaning the length and width. And a cube is three dimensional because it has three dimensions, length, width and height. And again, this is a valid notion. But why is a line one dimensional and the plane two dimensional? Note that both of these are self-similar. And we may break a line segment into four self-similar intervals each with the same length and each of which may, can be magnified by a factor of 4 to yield the original segment. And we can break a line segment into 7 self-similar pieces 
each with magnification factor 7 or 20 cell similar pieces with magnification factor 20. In journal, we can break a line segment into n cell similar pieces each with magnification factor n. Scale is different. We can decompose a scale into 4 cell similar subscales and the magnification factor here is 2. Alternatively, we can break the scale into 9 cell similar pieces with magnification factor 3 or 25 cell similar pieces with magnification factor 5. Clearly, the scale may be broken into n part 2 cell similar copies of itself, each of which must be magnified by a factor of n to reveal the original figure. Finally, we can decompose our cube into n part 3 cell similar pieces, each of which has magnification factor n. Now, what is the dimension of Septin's cube triangle? First, we see that dimension of a scale. To the formula, dimension is equal to log number of cell similar pieces over log magnification factor, which is equal to log n part 2 over log n, which is equal to 2. And similarly, the dimension of cube is dimension, which is equal to dimension, log number of cell similar pieces over log magnification factor, and the dimension of cube is 3. Now we can find that dimension of the uh, Sierpinski triangle through this formula. And you can see on the screen that the dimension of Sierpinski triangle is 1.58. That is shocking. Because the dimension of Sierpinski triangle is between the dimension of line and the dimension of plane. Because the dimension of line is 1 and dimension of plane is 2. And the dimension of Sierpinski triangle is between 1 and 2. Just as a I is telling us. Now we can look at the examples of fractals in nature. There are many examples present around us. Nature is full of fractals. Consider the branches of a tree. Each branch looks like a smaller version of the whole tree. Another example is the veins in a leaf. The pattern of the veins look similar no matter how much you zoom in. Coastlines and mountain ranges also exhibit fractal patterns. Lightning strike from fractal patterns as electrical discharge branches out unpredictably. A smaller branch bears the overall shape of the lightning strike. Clouds exhibit fractal patterns in their shape and structures. Whether viewed from afar or up close, the puffy, uneven edges of the clouds follow cell-similar patterns. The human cardiovascular and respiratory system also demonstrate fractal patterns. The branching patterns of veins, arteries, and bronchial tubes in the lungs ensure efficient transport and exchange of gases and nutrients within the body. Let's visualize a fractal tree to see this cell similarity in action. We start with the main branch and add smaller branches at each step. We call it a fractal canopy, which is a specific type of fractal structure that resembles the branching pattern of a tree. The fractal tree can be described using a recursive algorithm. Start with the main branch of length help. For this, draw a single vertical line segment. From the top of this segment, draw two new line segments at a certain angle representing branches. At each iteration, split each branch into two smaller branches. Each new branch is a fraction R of the original length and is rotated by an angle theta. Continue this process for several iterations until a complex tree-like structure emerges. Fractal tree equation is given by x n is equal to x star plus l cos theta, y n is equal to y star plus l sin theta. Let's implement this in a Python to visualize it. And when the quadrant, the picture that is displayed in front of you appears. As the fractal tree grows, we see the pattern of self-similarity, where each branch looks like a smaller version of the whole. This fractal tree isn't just a drawing. It's a reflection of the complex patterns we see in nature. Each branch, no matter how small, carries the essence of the entire tree. In conclusion, I would like to say that our journey through the world of fractals has unveiled the hidden mathematical order within the complexities of nature. From the complex patterns of the tree branches and leads to the fractal structure in lightning clouds and even within our bodies, we have seen how fractal geometry provide a unique lens of to understand and appreciate the natural world. Fractal help us in many ways. It has application in ecology. They explain how plants grow and interact with the environment. In medicine, they help us understand the branching of blood vessels and lungs. In environmental science, they help us study coastline and mountain ranges. Fractals not only enhance our scientific knowledge, but also inspire technical and economic innovations. 
The self-similar patterns found in nature remind us that complexity can often be broken down into simpler repeating structure, offering new perspectives and solutions. Thank you for joining me in exploring the fascinating intersection of pure mathematics in biology. I hope this video has sparked your curiosity and encouraged you to look deeper into the patterns that shape our world. The beauty of fractals lies not just in their complexity, but in the elegance of their simplicity showing us that even the most complex system can be understood through the lens of mathematics.